Hello students, welcome to another story time. We are sticking with nonfiction books this week and we are gonna continue to talk more about Egypt. Um, you heard about Joseph for the last couple of days and how he and his family ended up in Egypt. And today we are going to read about the Exodus. Um, and as you can see, it's the same author as the last book that I read to you. And the pictures and the illustrations are just incredible in these books. So I'll continue to show those to you as well. Um, so the Exodus is the story of Moses, which I'm sure you're familiar with, but it's always wonderful to hear true stories of the wonderful things that God has done. So here we go. When the Hebrews were slaves in Egypt, a Hebrew woman gave birth to a son. Now Pharaoh had ordered that all the Hebrew baby boys should be killed. The mother made a basket of reeds, placed her baby inside, and hid it among the bulrushes. Her daughter Miriam kept watch nearby. Some time later, Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to bathe. She heard the baby crying and picked him up. She felt sorry for the little boy. Miriam came forward and asked, shall I go and find you one of the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? So Miriam fetched the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said, look after this little boy for me and I will pay you. The woman took the baby and nursed him. When he was old enough, she brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter who named him Moses. And here's a picture. You can see Moses in the water right here in the Nile River. Moses grew up as an Egyptian prince surrounded by the riches of Egypt, but he never forgot that he was a Hebrew and he hated the cruel way his people were treated. One day, he saw an Egyptian guard whipping a Hebrew slave. Moses was so angry that he leaped at the guard and killed him with his bare hands. When Pharaoh heard of this, he was very angry and wanted to kill Moses. He summoned the captain of the guard and ordered him to arrest Moses. But Moses fled to the land of Midian, where he lived and worked as a shepherd for many years. In time, Pharaoh died and was, was replaced with another king. The new Pharaoh was just as cruel and the Hebrews in Egypt suffered even more than before. One day, while Moses was looking after his flock in Midian, God appeared to him as a fire blazing out from a bush. Although the bush was on fire, it was not burning up. God called to Moses from out of the flames and said, Take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. I am your God, and I have seen the suffering of my people. Go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. You will lead them out of Egypt to a land flowing with milk and honey. Then God spoke to Moses' brother Aaron in Egypt and said, Your brother is coming home. Go and meet him. The two brothers met and went to Pharaoh's court together. They said to Pharaoh, the Lord God has sent us to tell you to set the Hebrews free and let them leave Egypt. I do not know your God, replied Pharaoh. Can your God show me a sign? Then Aaron threw his staff to the ground and it turned into a snake. When Pharaoh called his magicians to throw down their staffs, their staffs also became snakes. But Aaron's snakes swallowed up all the other snakes. Pharaoh took no notice. No, he said, I will not let your people go. So God sent a series of plagues to strike Egypt. The Nile River turned to blood, and the country was invaded by frogs, insects, and flies. The cattle died, and boils covered people's bodies. Fierce hailstorms raged. Locusts ate up all the corn and God sent darkness for three days. Still, Pharaoh would not let the Hebrews go. Finally, God said to Moses, tonight the eldest son of each family in the land will die, but you and your people will be safe if, uh, if you do as I command. So each Hebrew family killed a lamb and painted its blood on their doorsteps, doorposts. They roasted the lamb, ate it with flat bread and bitter herbs, and waited while the angel passed over them. Hebrews still remember this time and celebrate it with a feast 
called the Passover. A great cry rose up from the Egyptians, a cry of grief for their dead sons. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron to him and said, Leave this land, you and all of your people. Leave, or we shall all die. The Hebrews left Egypt that night, more than 600,000 men, together with women and children and their flocks and cattle. Moses led the way, and a young boy named Joshua walked by his side. God led the Hebrews in a pillar of cloud day by day and guided them by a pillar of flame during the night. But Pharaoh changed his mind and sent his chariots after the Hebrew people. When the Egyptians caught up with them, the Hebrews had reached the Red Sea. God caused the pillar of cloud to bring darkness on the Egyptians and the pillar of flame to bring light to the Hebrews. So the two armies were kept apart. Then God sent a powerful east wind, which parted the waters in two. The Hebrews walked right through the sea on dry ground and crossed safely to the other side. When the Egyptians tried to follow, the sea came roaring down on them and swept them away. The Hebrews traveled on and on into the wilderness. When their food ran out, the people complained bitterly that they were hungry. Then God said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you and for your people. The next day, in the early morning, God covered the ground with food. It was white and tasted of honey, and Moses called it manna. All the time that the Hebrews were in the desert, God gave them manna to eat. Look, it looks like it is snowing, but it's not snowing. That's the manna falling from the sky for the Hebrews to eat. God also sent them flocks of birds called quails, which they cooked and ate. As the Hebrews went deeper into the desert, the sun beat down on them, and there was no water. They began to quarrel with Moses. We should have stayed in Egypt. We'll all die of thirst here. God told Moses to strike a rock with his staff. Suddenly, fresh water gushed out, and they all had enough to drink. After traveling for three months, the Hebrews came to the foot of Mount Sinai. There, God called out to Moses to come meet him. So Moses went up to the top of the mountain, amid thunder and lightning, flames of fire, and the blast of trumpets. Then God gave Moses the Ten Commandments written on two tablets of stone. These laws told the people how they should live. Moses stayed on the mountain for so long that the people grew angry and impatient. They shouted at Aaron, what happened to Moses? Where is his God now? Make us another God, one we can see. So Aaron collected their golden jewelry, melted it down and made them a golden calf. When Moses returned, the people were dancing and worshiping the golden calf. Moses was so angry, he broke the tablets God had given them, given him and destroyed the golden calf. But God forgave the people and ordered Moses to cut two new tablets of stone. Moses carried them up to the mountain and God wrote out the Ten Commandments again. When Moses came down, his face was shining because he'd been talking with God. And all the people listened as Moses taught them the laws of God. For 40 years, the Hebrews traveled through the wilderness until at last they reached the edge of the Jordan Valley. From the top of a high mountain, God showed Moses the beautiful land of Canaan. This is the land I promised to give to my people, God said. I have let you see it from a distance, but you shall not enter it. And there Moses died. His people buried him in a peaceful valley and wept for him for 30 days. Then Joshua, who had first followed Moses when he was a boy, took his place and led the Hebrews into the promised land. After all their wanderings and struggles, they were a free people at last. They had finally come home. And there's the last picture. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day.